In our last notes, we talked about what chemical reactions are and how to balance them. In these notes, we're going to talk about the different types of chemical reactions that can occur. Before we talk about the reaction types, we're going to review something we learned early last semester, which is the difference between chemical and physical changes, because substances can go through either chemical changes, where something new is actually formed, or they can also go through physical changes, which is like a change in the state of matter. So uh, let's take a look and review those concepts. So the first one we're going to talk about is a chemical change. A chemical change basically um, is when a chemical reaction occurs. We have new substances with new chemical formulas that are being formed after the change. So what you're going to do is always check the chemical equation to see that new chemical formulas are formed on the product side. So we've got two examples here. This is a rusty nail um, and it gives the equation right next to it. Iron solid plus oxygen gas react to form um, iron oxide. Okay, iron three oxide. So um, first off actually we have to do what to this chemical equation? Because right now it's not uh, reflecting the law of conservation of mass. So let's Let's uh, balance it first. Take a minute to pause the video, try to balance it yourself, and then resume in um, just a sec. All right, so this is what you should have gotten after balancing the chemical um, equation. 4Fe plus 3O2 react to form 2Fe2O3. All right, so we can see that in this uh, equation, new products are formed. This Fe2O3 is not seen on the reactant side. So this is a chemical change. Um, the second example is also a chemical change. It's um, basically wood burning. And wood is uh, made up of, you know, mostly glucose. So we're going to put C6H12O2 solid plus um, a reaction with oxygen because that's what burning is. It's a reaction with oxygen. And that ref and that uh, reacts to form carbon dioxide gas and also water in the gas form. So um, once again, pause it for a minute, balance the equation, and then restart it and to see if you're right. All right, so here is what you should have gotten um, for balancing that chemical equation. C6H12O2 plus 8O2 react to form 6CO2 plus 6H2O. And again, we can see that we have brand new products, new chemical equations, or I'm sorry, new chemical formulas on the product side um, that we, have, we did not see on the reactant side. So again, that indicates a chemical change. A physical change is different. It's the altering of a substance's physical state without changing its chemical composition. So when you look at a chemical equation, you're going to see no new products or no new chemical formulas on uh, that right side of the arrow. So let's take a look at two examples. This is melting ice. So if we write out that chemical equation for melting ice, we would have H2OS, um, you know, yields or reacts to form H2O liquid. We have the same exact thing on the both on both sides. The only thing that changes is the physical state here. So that is a physical change. The same thing with um, the second example. This is dry ice. Um, so we have carbon dioxide in a solid form that is um, going to carbon dioxide in the gas form. And again, we have both CO2 on both the same, you know, both sides of the equation. So no chemical composition is being changed. The only thing that's changing, again, is the physical state. Um, so those are two examples. Uh, so phase changes are physical changes. Um, if we are dissolving something, so if we're taking um, salt, for example, and dissolving it in water, that would also be just a physical change. And let me show you why. If we write out the uh, dissolving of salt you know, in water, basically this is what it's going to look like. NaCl with um, in the solid form goes to NaCl in the aqueous form. And so still we have the same NaCl, NaCl. There's no chemical change here. So it's a physical change. Um, and then tomorrow in our lab, what we're going to see is um, what's called dissociating or breaking apart of ions. Um, 
so when something, you know, just breaks apart and makes, you know, little ions like sodium ions or chloride ions, um, that's also just a physical change because we're not making anything new. In this slide, I have some examples for you to practice with. So these, this is four different chemical equations written out. And um, the first thing I want you to do is, after you get these written down, uh, pause the video, balance them, and then try to figure out whether they are physical or chemical changes. So go ahead and pause right now and um, copy them down, balance, and figure out whether they're physical or chemical changes. Once you've done that, then go ahead and hit play again and I'll show you the answers. All right, here they are. Um, super simple balancing job, just the first one needed to be balanced. Um, the first one is definitely a chemical change because we have new products that we did not see on the reactant side being formed. Um, the same thing with the second one. The second one is also a chemical change because again, we have new products on um, the right-hand side which are not the same as the ones on the left-hand side. Now it's the same elements that make it up, but they are arranged differently, so that's why it's a chemical change. Now the last two are both physical changes. Um, the first one being uh, just dissolving of copper sulfate. So that's, um, again, since we just have a, a change from S to AQ, that's a physical change. And the last one is um, a, an example of that dissociation of ions that I talked about. Um, so in this one, the NaCl is dissociating or just breaking apart into ions, um, the Na plus one ion and uh, the Cl minus one ion. So that, again, is just a physical change. We're going to move on to the five types of chemical changes or reactions that we're going to study in this unit. There are more, but we're just going to take a look at these main five. And the first one we're going to take a look at is what's called decomposition. In a decomposition chemical reaction, one substance, you're always going to start with one substance and it's going to be broken into two or more new smaller substances. So if we take a look at this picture here, we've got, um, you know, we can represent A and B. So we have compound AB that breaks apart into A and B separately. So um, we've got one thing that breaks apart into two or more um, smaller substances. So here's a, a real world example right here. Um, we could take water, liquid water, and decompose it into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Um, so that's what a decomposition chemical reaction is. The second type of chemical reaction that we're going to take a look at is actually the opposite of a decomposition. It's what we call a synthesis, or sometimes it's also called combination reaction, um, where you have two or more smaller substances that combine to form one new big substance. So it's basically just the opposite of decomposition. We're going to um, you know, take A plus B and make a compound AB. Okay, so um, we can take a look at the example here is just the opposite of what we see um, in decomposition. We're gonna take hydrogen gas and um, combine it with oxygen gas, let it react to form water. Okay, so that's the exact opposite as what we had in the decomposition example. So decomposition and synthesis are opposites. So it makes it a little easier to remember and study them. And with that, I'm going to throw in a little extra credit opportunity. Tomorrow, only in the first five minutes of class, if you bring up a little piece of paper with the word synthesis and your name, I will give you five extra credit points for this uh, unit. So again, synthesis and your name, five extra credit points, only in the first five minutes. If you forget, too bad, so sad. The third type of chemical reaction we're going to talk about is single replacement, um, also called single displacement. They're both the same thing. Okay, single replacement, single displacement. Uh, this is where an element is going to replace or, you know, recombine with another compound to make a new element and a different compound. So um, here, if we kind of think about in our picture example, if this compound was AB, okay, and we react it with element C, and now all of a sudden we get A plus CB, okay, we now have a new element and a new compound from the recombination 
Okay, or the replacement of um, our reactants there. So um, now it's super important. Um, actually, these this right here, this little paragraph right here, is really important to kind of um, keep in mind. It says that uh, the reactant element displaces an element in the compound that is most chemically similar. So, for example, if you have a metal atom as your um, as your element, it's going to replace the metal atom in the compound. If you have a non-metal atom as the element, as the single guy, then it's going to replace the non-metal atom in the compound. So if we take a look at uh, this example down here, um, we've got a compound, CaI2, and we have an element, Cl. Okay. Um, this Cl is, chlorine is a non-metal, so he has to replace the non-metal atom in this uh, compound. So these guys have to switch places. In fact, they do. If we take a look, we see that the Cl displaces or kicks out the I2 and reacts with calcium to form this new compound, CaCl2. So we have a switching of places between an element um, and a compound. So along with single replacement, there's also called double replacement or double displacement. Um, again, either way, it doesn't matter. They both mean the same thing. Um, in double displacement, you're actually starting out with two compounds and you're basically just switching the partners within the compounds. So if we take a look at our example, um, our little picture here, if this is uh, compound AB, and um, other compounds CD, they're gonna switch places. We're gonna um, now get a, two new compounds with um, a mixture. So instead of C being with D, C here is gonna be with B, and A is gonna switch partners and now B with D. Okay, so we get a switching or an exchange of atoms between the compounds. And um, this is kind of how I like to, to think about it is, um, Usually this is always gonna occur in ionic compounds. And so what I do is I keep, you know, the first metal atoms the same, okay? So Na, 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 okay, I'm sorry. Cs and Na are separate in the two reactant compounds. They're gonna remain separate in the two product compounds. And what we're gonna do then is switch the non-metals, all right? So instead of Cs, being with F, he's going to now switch and become with OH. And again, the same thing with NA. Instead of being with OH, he's now going to switch places or partners and become um, a compound with F. So we have this switching of non-metal atoms um, within the compounds. So that's kind of an easy way to think about it. If you keep two of the um, you know kinds of atoms in each element or each compound separate, Okay, and just switch the partners, you'll get it right every time. The last type of reaction we're going to talk about is combustion reactions, which involves oxygen gas combining with another substance to release light and heat, which is also called fire. Uh, although it's not always going to be fire, sometimes it's just a glow, but that's uh, what combustion reactions are. Oxygen combining with another substance to release light and heat. So these are two examples here. We've got a uh, fireplace fire on the left, which is a reaction between wood and the oxygen in the atmosphere. And on the right, we have a Bunsen burner, which is a reaction between methane gas and oxygen in the atmosphere. So this example that's written out here is the chemical reaction for a Bunsen burner. Methane, CH4, plus you know, O2 reacts to form CO2 and water. Now water is gonna be in the gas form, obviously, because we don't get pools of water after we've used the uh, Bunsen burn. So um, in both cases, we get the release of light and heat in as fire. This last slide is to help you guys practice how to classify the five different types of chemical reaction. So if you take a look at a chemical reaction, can you tell me what type it is?
So the first thing I want you to do is, again, pause, write these things down, and then practice balancing them, classifying them as one of the five types we talked about, and then um, hit play button again, and then I'll show you the answers. All right, so here are the answers, um, all balanced for you, and the reaction types given. The first one is a synthesis, because we're starting it with two things and making one big thing in the end, so we're combining them together, which is also called synthesis. The second one is a single replacement reaction, because we start out with an element and a compound, and then we're going to switch, you know, kind of incorporate or replace that element into the compound to make a new compound and a different element. Um, but if you notice, the K and the MG are both metal atoms, so remember they have to be similar in order to switch places. Um, the third one is a double replacement. We start out with two compounds here, and they're going to switch partners. So again, we, we keep the NA and the CA separate, okay? And then we just switch their partners, um, the F for the BR. And our last one is a decomposition. We start out with one thing, and we break it apart or decompose it into two or more smaller substances.